uh, Yojas, right? Hello, Yojas, yeah. how are you? Hi, hi, Mary. I'm good, thank you. Yeah, good, good, good to, to, to hear you. <coughs> oh, uh, sorry. How are you? I'm doing really well, doing really well. Uh, so we, we are live here and thank you for, uh, for being there on time. And uh, uh, the, the, the thing is, uh, yeah, uh, you will, are you able to share your slides with us? Yes, sure. Uh, let me just share my screen. Yeah, we're really glad for this event uh, even happening virtually in London, right? That's a unique opportunity to have speakers from all the banks around the world. Then DBS is really known in the API space uh, for all the good work they do on APIs and data. And so we're really glad to have you. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you help me to say whether I'm... If I'm yeah, you have uh, be below below the photos, you have four icons, one with the mm -hmm. camera, a microphone, and you have kind of something that looks like a screen, and actually it's a screen. And if yeah. you click on this, you would be able to share either your full screen, either uh, just uh, uh, one application window, and yeah, like this. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. So the stage is yours for 25 minutes. Are you able to present full screen? Yeah. We see your full screen. We see your uh, video. Yeah, uh, enjoy yeah, the twenty-five minutes on uh, in on our digital stage, right? Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, uh, very good morning in London. Uh, I'm Yoja Summer. I'm speaking from Singapore today. Uh, I'm working in DBS Bank, and I'm specialized for data visualization tools and part of a data platform team. And it, um, I'm part of uh, education system in DBS Bank as well. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, data democratizing uh, using self-service tools. So uh, first, first of all, uh, why are we talking about it? Uh, that's like a question to uh, everyone. So when, when we are uh, in the, in the uh, like older uh, times, when we are following certain approaches in the traditional manner, when the business is looking for drawing some insights uh, from uh, from any of the uh, data you have. So what exactly you do is you rely highly on the BA or executives and they uh, reach out to the IT department to get the specific requirement the business is looking for. And then the IT department uh, churn out these uh, details and send it to the executives and then uh, the business unit or here I'm taking example of marketing team and you can draw your insights. What happened in this approach is uh, you have to, uh, there is a high uh, dependency uh, with the BA or the executive who is uh, like completely relying on the IT department to execute his functions. So uh, in this approach, we have been following it uh, from almost five decades now, and we are still continuing with this approach. What happens um, in, uh, while executing this, uh, it takes uh, a lot of time to execute and in this era it's like a need uh, that we need everything uh, on the fly we need latest information we need futuristic information and we can't really wait for following the uh, traditional approach of uh, project development life cycle so uh, what we do we look for democratizing data i'm going to give a simple example here uh, everybody use google so what Google is, uh, you are looking for information and Google has all the data. So you just look for whatever you're looking for and you get the information there, right? So uh, in like you're not relying on somebody who will use Google and get information for you. So because it is highly accessible to you, it is easy to understand. You can directly uh, look for that information and get it uh, yeah, whenever you want. So uh, we are not going to follow the traditional approach while talking about democratization. What we are going to do is giving access to everybody in the team for the big data platform. So in the uh, in, when you have a centralized data platform, uh, if your business uh, unit, which is technical as well as non-technical people, when they uh, get trained and understand the platform, and rather than relying on the traditional approach, if they all start utilizing the data platform, it makes uh, life easy, faster processing, and you also uh, avoid the workload on the IT department. So uh, this is, uh, we are going to talk in detail how exactly we can implement, implement this uh, platform so that uh, anyone uh, from your team 
can easily access and churn out details. So, OK, I'm going to share one of the real time case where we implemented this uh, approach. And uh, this is like um, there. So there was a tech team who were like highly relying on um, uh, traditional approaches like project development lifecycle. And these are the exact numbers that we have uh, like one month of uh, one month we spent for data mapping, data discovery, then data transformation took one month. Uh, dashboard development took three weeks. And then we have a different environments in the platform like SIT, UAD production, which takes time for deployments and then uh, you get access. And then when we gave them training of these approach and having data democratization in the platform, so what happened, we have seen like a really uh, good difference between what we used to uh, what we used to tell to the teams versus what they are do doing right now. And this is like almost 45 to 50 percent of uh, time they had saved in the entire process so uh, this is quite a big change for us like to uh, when when i uh, talk about like any project deployment you have uh, annual targets or quarterly targets and you can actually achieve uh, more than that and it's quite competitive so uh, this is uh, like a real-time scenario uh, that I worked on and then we have seen this. Of course, there is a scope that you can always improve uh, from the platform side and uh, get more and more uh, insights and make it more, much more faster. But uh, there are like uh, certain challenges, which I will be sharing uh, uh, during the session as well, like what are the challenges we face and how exactly we improve on that. So uh, before that, I'm going to uh, share an analogy between a cooking restaurant and uh, a, a restaurant and the cooking studio. So uh, why this analogy is uh, this is one is referring to the application and the cooking studio is referring to the platform. When you go to the restaurant, uh, either you go to the fine dine or hawker center, the first thing you get is the menu card. In the menu card, you have different kind of dishes. And then you place your order, a chef, uh, a cook will actually prepare your dish and serve you. Here, you don't have control on the ingredients, but you know that the dishes are available and you can actually select whichever you want. When you go to the cooking studio, uh, you become a cook. Plus, you go with the open mind because you don't know how exactly you're going to uh, execute or prepare your food. So what you get, uh, you get full access to the uh, cooking studio. You get all the ingredients. Uh, you get guidance from the chefs and the cooks to prepare your dish. You can be very innovative here. And probably whatever you are building, you, you can make something innovative because you get full access. And there is no one to, uh, as a gatekeeper, uh, like this is what you will get. Right. Uh, so this is uh, like a... I, I really like this example to compare uh, applications versus a platform because in platform you can uh, really get full access for all the tools and you can actually work on uh, every single part and uh, prepare uh, what your business is looking for rather than relying on somebody who gives you something which is already existing for some other projects. So that's like a um, basic difference. So this is the framework uh, that we are following uh, in, the, in the company, which includes four A's like ask, acquire, analyze, act. So uh, when you receive any business uh, problem, you uh, analyze, uh, first you ask the question, why, why, are, why are you working on it? Define the problem. Then uh, you acquire the data, you design your solutions, and then you analyze it. When you analyze, uh, you process your data and create uh, different business models. And then you act by having your uh, performance monitoring, KPIs, dashboards, and then you meet your outcome for the business uh, proposition that you're working on. There are possibilities like uh, when you uh, meet your business, uh, either you meet or you don't. And when you don't meet the business problem, you can still follow the same approach and keep improving and enhancing uh, what you were working on by following these four A's. And uh, the best part is when you are working on these, uh, some other people or the different teams who are looking for similar kind of a solution, they can actually uh, make use of the solution which you have built and uh, uh, refer to it as a, a reusable asset. 
So when we call reusable asset, it's like you can share your data uh, or your procedures with other team members as well. So that's the best part. And uh, uh, so, okay. So uh, before we uh, go for the basic platform architecture and the, I'm going to explain like what are the building blocks uh, for executing this foray. So uh, let's go for a quick uh, quiz time. Uh, it's a mentee and there are like few questions which I'm going, I'll try my best to address by end of the session. So I'm, I'm just going to spend like uh, the half a minute for that. I have started receiving answers and the results are like uh, quite amazing, which I am going to share by end of the session, by the way. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, I'm going to explain uh, the building blocks for the platform in the next. And yeah, so uh, when we talk about having centralized uh, platform, what it means is there are different uh, business units and there are different tech teams. Everyone will ingest data to the centralized platform rather than keeping it in their own uh, data sets. Uh, it is uh, easy to speak, but hard to implement because every team have their own uh, big data platforms, right? And then you are trying to get uh, all these data in the centralized uh, platform. So uh, it is important that you have a right set of uh, tools in the platform where users can ingest in the various format. Once you ingest data in the platform, it can go through a data ingestion layer, then compute and then the data consumption part comes. While doing that, there are a lot of other areas that we can explore and um, dig down in the uh, platform side, which I'm not going to talk today because the main agenda is more towards the governance side. And the, uh, the governance is quite important here as we are getting all the data from all different uh, departments. Uh, the governance really helps to see the metadata of all uh, the organization which uh, eliminates uh, silos, like which gives you full visibility for the uh, metadata, which helps you to derive your business insight in a uh, much more uh, competitive way. So who are the consumers for this data? It could be data stewards, data analysts, data scientists, data engineers, um, and uh, business users as well. So how they are going to get this connect to the platform using self-service portal. So we have designed something called self-service portal, which, uh, which gives you full visibility like, okay, these are the tools available, how to make use of that in a very simple manner um, to, uh, so, so, so we are, so I'm from the platform team where we work every day uh, on uh, simplifying things for uh, business users or from, for LOBTs like who can actually work on um, data in a very simplistic way. So that is something uh, like we really work hard to make uh, these uh, these things easy for everyone. And once uh, once the data and everything is in align, we have edu education system where we ask everyone to go through the trainings, workshops, and we uh, make them certified so that uh, we know that users are going to make use of the platform in a right way. Uh, even though there is no right way as such because it's open and anyone can make use of it uh, the way they want and uh, the way they want to execute things. But uh, what we can do here is to give them a right direction, the best practices and the fundamentals. And uh, microservices helps to connect uh, to various uh, data in a very short 
uh, time span. So APIs play a vital role when we are looking for data in a centralized platform, and it gives you data in a much more faster uh, way. So tech innovation that propels data democratization includes uh, governance and strategies, tools and infrastructure, and data insights. And what are the tools you are going to use for that is the data visualization softwares and data federation software for the governance, cloud storage, self-service BI tools, and e-learning workshops. Uh, you have to have these things in place uh, while uh, working on the platform side. So uh, what has changed by uh, democratizing data? First is like a culture change and the tool adoption rate have led to the faster access because uh, we are making it open for everyone uh, in the organization. So the second important change is uh, we are no longer working in silos and everything is centralized. So uh, the problems which we used to have uh, by working in silos, the disconnect between the businesses, uh, it will be open with the help of uh, governance, uh, which allows you uh, to get visibility for metadata. And the self-service platform, platform helps uh, everyone to get trained and educated on the platform. So, of course, nothing comes very easy, right? Your plan is to execute this platform in a very simplistic way, but there are challenges that we face. And one of, uh, one of the most important challenges that when you open this platform for everybody in the organization, there are always possibility, like if some non-technical person makes use of this platform in a very uh, different way, in a bad way, and make bad insights for the company. So uh, there is always a challenge. But it's something which we have, uh, we have seen in the previous slides, like uh, when we are talking, when we are having the education system and certification for everyone to go through before using the platform, that can help to reduce these kind of um, uh, possibilities uh, that people um, utilize data platform in a wrong way, right? That's something that uh, we are working every day to improve on. Uh, the second uh, challenge that we face is the security risk. The, the, when we have centralized data, when we have data from everyone, access to everybody, of course, there are uh, to meet uh, integrity for uh, data security. It's uh, very, very important that you have um, good security and end-to-end -end where uh, nothing gets leaked and you have uh, people rely on you the, on the platform more. So these are uh, some of the challenges you might face while implementing this, but uh, there are ways to improve. Yeah, so the key takeaway from today's session is the culture change. The self-service helps you to um, work on it, uh, like enable everyone, and the education system, which uh, helps you to get trained for that. So yeah, uh, if any one of you have uh, skipped the questions, please, uh, I'm going to answer all the questions now. Um, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, hello, Yuzhas. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but great, you use the tool for asking questions, so we have the question live. <laughs> Oh, for sure. OK, uh, maybe uh, what I will do, people who have asked me questions in uh, Mentimeter, uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And uh, still, I'll answer th those questions. And I'm going to take questions which are live on API Days now. No, I think I think uh, uh, I think people contributed on your tool. So let's use the tool. Let's use the tool. That's a uh, real uh, live live questions uh, that has been asked. Uh. Uh, OK. So, so I kind of see them uh, by order. Uh, any common challenges with securing the data, making sure it's used by people with the legitimate need, et cetera? Do you have any point in this? Uh, yeah. So, uh, can you repeat? I'm sorry. So uh, is there any common, common challenges with securing the data to make sure it's used by the people with the legitimate need and, and access? Right. What's your yeah, point? So, uh, yeah, so uh, this is uh, quite important uh, to have. When we are uh, having centralized platform, we have uh, multiple layers of security. Uh, it's not uh, so first is like a authentication part and then the authorization. So we have different uh, aspects and uh, we, uh, we have all these checkpoints and the enforcement points on all the tools we have in the platform so that uh, there is no way that uh, we miss on that data security part. 
Yeah, we have another question. It's like, uh, uh, what is the difference we need to make between the data and the API who, who access the data? Because the API is maybe just a representation of the data. So uh, I, uh, I, maybe the, per the, the person who asked the question can tell a little bit more about it. But I know that, for example, in the industry I work, for example, uh, for credit score, you know, you can, you can have a data for credit scoring in banking, but you can have an API that just say, okay, go, no go, right? Okay, credit accepted or not accepted. So there is, a, there is a difference to make between the API as the representation of the data and, and, and the data, but uh, do you have any idea on how to manage this? Like how we use data internally and how do we expose it? We need to change, do we need to change it? Yeah, so um, I, I just want to like, I'm not sure whether I understood the question correctly because uh, is it about like how APIs are playing role in this and uh, wh what is uh, what how we retrieve data from API days? Um, sorry, uh, APIs and how we retrieve data from uh, data visualization no. tools. Like so I think the question the question is more like we have data in a company like in databases or in other uh, system applications, but mm -hmm. the way we expose it, should we expose it as is, as it is internally, or do we need to make a representation layer, like a specific, uh, you know, abstraction? Yeah, so it is important to have a specific abstraction layer, even though uh, we get access to data and even though APIs help to get you uh, all the data in uh, in play, but you have data visualization layer to uh, make it more uh, beautiful looking and the visuals and then draw some more KPIs, uh, add on the AI part in that or use some forecasting and uh, things like that. So it's not uh, like if you want to represent the raw data or even the basics, it is possible that you can uh, directly use it or you can enhance it. It will be like purely your choice and how you want to utilize that data or visualize that. Yeah, good. We have a question from Andre. Is the data platform the golden source for oper operational data consumption? Is the access done by API push and pull methods? So first, is the data platform the golden source for operational data consumption? Hmm. So uh, this is uh, very uh, important. I actually, I like the question because what we are doing here is mostly for operational uh, department because in the operational side, we have a lot of procedures and it is time consuming. So by having uh, platform access, it's possible that uh, you can get this uh, information much more faster. And the business case, which I shared is actually for the operational side, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we have a question from Claire. Are you able to share some of the things you've done to help people interpret and use the data appropriately? Hmm. Yeah, so uh, we have built, this is like something, um, I would say there are various ways to uh, look at it. Like uh, when, when you say like the right way to use data, by having these uh, education system, we know that uh, we are relying on users or we are relying on everyone that they are going to follow these steps to implement. But sometimes it's possible that uh, even after attending the training, being a human, you forget. And uh, then when you start using platform, you make mistakes. But one single mistake can actually affect uh, other people as well as it is a centralized platform. So when we identify these cases, we actually get in touch with those people or the teams, and then we try to troubleshoot what are the issues. And then uh, while doing that, we also give them different ideas or suggestion, like uh, not to do this way, or what could be the workaround for that. And uh, this is how we are uh, improving day by day, because it's like not in, uh, once you have something like this, and everybody is going to use it in a right way. So we have to keep doing it so that at the end of the day, we improve the performance. Uh, yeah, so initial phase is quite tough. Yeah, last two quick questions from Andre, the, you know, about the question about data platform, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, he's, as he's asking, is the access done via API push and pull methods? Or is it like event driven or is it like what are something else like batch or whatever? Yeah, so uh, access is, uh, you can say, we have used a lot of APIs for that, of course, for push and pull. And uh, we have uh, given, like based on your user ID, you can actually get access or onboarded to the platform to uh, access all the tools. So by doing that, uh, you can directly access the data 
and there is a data consumption layer which is a visualization tool mostly so that's also like a way to get back your data from the platform after processing so once you ingest and then uh, you consume via different sources last question from melissa uh, about governance uh, have the governance models changed because she asked the question how do you balance the tight regulatory needs of the bank and traditionally yes. slow moving projects and tight governance with the speed and freedom that epi enables so have governance yeah. models to to have this this, data? this yeah. is uh, absolutely absolutely nice question because governance uh, is very very important it's pay, playing the most important role because uh, when we uh, when we have a right governance in place uh, we can actually have the lineage for the data as well or the history like whoever is ingesting data to the platform and if they are modifying or changing or some other person are using on the same data set as it is reusable so we lose the track right so the governance is very important which gives us uh, visuals for what has happened when we are talking about any uh, set of data the governance gives you idea about like okay uh, this data has been changed at a certain stage and this is how you can improve over there or uh, who is the person who did that by having a right security access right so these two play um, like help us to uh, get better understanding and monitor everything so the governance is um, quite vital role here Thank you, Yeja. Thank you very much for all of this. Again, uh, if you want to uh, to uh, meet, virtually meet, or at least ask uh, Raja some questions, you have her email directly in the slide or her LinkedIn profile. Thank you very much, Yeja, for making it happen. That was uh, that was a great you. presentation. And uh, great I uh, before I uh, before I yep. say goodbye to everyone, I just want to share the final. Uh, so there was a statistics that uh, in the okay. Mentimeter, and it's like uh, the application team uh, received thirteen percent. And uh, the platform team received 87%. That is something I wanted to share with everyone. And yeah. that's some of the questions I have received that I'll try to address uh, via LinkedIn or you can email me as well. Yeah, yeah. thank you very much, Yujas. Thank you. Have a great thank day. You. Bye.